everybody welcome to our Sunday school hour let's all stand we'll grab a hymnal if you've got one uh, if not the words are up on the screen for nor silver nor gold 215 215 in your hymnals nor silver nor gold hath obtained my redemption it's not a physical thing it's a spiritual thing that we receive from the Lord it's a beautiful thing 215 nor silver nor gold hath obtained my redemption nor riches of earth could have saved my poor soul. The blood of the cross is my only foundation. The death of my Savior now maketh me whole. I am redeemed, but not with silver. I am bought, but not with gold. Bought with the price, the blood of Jesus, precious price of love. Silver nor gold hath obtained my redemption. The guilt of my conscience too heavy and grown. The blood of the cross is my only foundation. The death of my Savior could only atone. I am redeemed. The silver I am bought, but not with gold. Water the prize, the blood of Jesus, precious price of love untold. Nor silver nor gold hath obtained my redemption. The holy commandment forbade me draw near. The blood of the cross is my only foundation. The death of my Savior. Silver, I am bought, 
but not with gold. Bought with a price, the blood of Jesus, precious price of love untold. I don't know what's going on. All right, welcome to... Welcome to Wildwood Baptist Church, our Sunday school. How exciting it is to be in God's house. And this week is an exciting week. We have our missions conference. So we have a bunch of our own missionaries here, which we love seeing. However, we got some new faces. And you're going to be introduced to one. He'll be speaking this morning for our Sunday school. And so um, we'll have another song. We'll introduce him. He'll come up. But we're excited to have the Jobway family in here. And we're looking forward to what God's given him. Uh, we just had a baptism in the last service, so God is still working in the lives of people, and, and we're excited about that. And when people say, man, the church is dead, this service right here tells me it's not. People are surrendering to God. People are going all over the world presenting the gospel. We're still seeing people baptized, and all glory goes to God. I, I'm, I am bullish on the future, and I'm excited to see what God's going to do here. So we'll pray, and then we'll be singing Trust and Obey, and it's 261 in your hymn book if you have that. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day given us. We thank you for the young lady who was baptized just in the previous service. It's great to see people taking those first steps of obedience. It's also thrilling to see people take the more mature steps of obedience, the ones where they go where God has called them. They go and sacrifice their love or their life for the love of the lost. We pray that you would just be with our missionaries, help them raise the support they have, but we also think about these four families that are here this week. Help us to be an encouragement to them. We pray, Lord, that you would bring in more finances in our faith promise, that we could bring on more missionaries, and that we'd be able to see your work continue throughout this world. Lord, we do love you, and we thank you. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And we'll have trust and obey for the film. 261 in your hymnal. 261. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, to abide with us still, and with all
glass Then in fellowship sweet We will sit at his feet Or we'll walk by his side in the way What he says we will do Where he sends we will go Never fear, only trust and wonderful singing please be seated we have the distinct honor of having the jobway family with us we're going to have missionary patrick jobway give us the message that god has given him this morning he has till 10 30 and if you don't listen till 10 30 it's 10 30 no matter what but we're excited to have him get a chance to not just show up and listen to messages but also take the chance to get to know these missionaries better uh, have your heart be drawn unto him and see what see what God would do. Make sure that you're supporting missions. Brother Jobway, feel free. Well, good morning, Wildwood Baptist Church. It's a uh, uh, distinct privilege to be with you uh, this week, and uh, we, we feel blessed, really, to be here in such a great church. And uh, we're excited to see what God will do this week in all of our hearts. And it's a blessing to be here. We want to thank you for... Uh, having us at the conference, we want to thank you for the basket and uh, just the wonderful accommodations and all the wonderful things uh, you're doing for us. I'd like you to turn to the book of Jonah this morning. Uh, the book of Jonah, it will be more like a Bible study uh, this morning in the book of Jonah. Book of Jonah. We are the Jobway family and uh, God has called us um, to, to reach the people of Frankfurt, Germany and especially uh, he has burned us to start a church in that great city of Frankfurt. And so um, uh, we're looking forward to be sharing with you more about what the Lord has been doing in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, the book of Jonah, if you would, this morning, uh, Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. Now, before I read my text this morning, I was reminded <laughs> earlier this morning during the service. Uh, actually, it was just a couple of weeks ago. My wife and I, we, uh, we were at a meeting. And uh, there were different keynote speakers during the meeting. And, um, and one of the speakers came and, and, and he gave sort of uh, 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 an account of a pastor's meeting that he attended. And so he was the first speaker. And then there was another younger man that was a second speaker. Now this pastor had been in the ministry for over 30 years. And so, and, and he just told us a story that uh, as he sat there with the younger speaker before uh, he began to speak. The younger speaker was the last, the second one. Uh, the younger speaker turned to him and said, uh, what are you preaching on? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, he said, well, and he, he told him what he, was, he, would be preached, uh, he would be preaching on. And the younger preacher was, uh, you know, startled. Like. And so the follow-up question was, did you pray about your sermon? <laughs> he said, of course, I, I know I prayed about my sermon. He said, well, I don't know about that. I know I, I prayed about mine, and, and we're speaking on the same subject. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you didn't pray about yours. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, and so the older preacher still went, you know, he had a sermon prepared, and he, he just preached, you know, what God had put in his heart. And then the younger preacher came, and, uh, and before he spoke, he said, he, he told the audience what just happened, that even though he's preaching from another text, the truths that he was preaching on are basically the same. And then he went ahead and preached a different sermon. So after the meeting, after, the, after he was done, when he walked down, the older preacher said, asked him, uh, did, you, did you really pray about what we were, you were going to preach today? He said, yes, I did. And then, and then he, he came with a question, so why didn't you preach it? You know? And uh, now the reason I'm saying that is because that's exactly what is happening this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as I was sitting there at, some, at the first hours, uh, I mean, all the truths that I, that I, I asked God to lead me uh, are almost the same. Now, it's a different text. <laughs> but I don't want someone to come to me after the yeah, certain yeah. hour. 
and ask me the question, why didn't you preach it? So I must assume that God wants these points to be drive in. I must assume that's what he wants. And so, and so let's read the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, Jonah chapter 1. Now the scripture says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the second, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. And so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Now I'll stop here, uh, and my text will come from verse 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the, second of the, the, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up. Before me, and I, I've entitled this um, this Sunday school lesson uh, "Missions Still." Mission Still. Uh, let's bow our head for prayer, and then we'll get into the the message. Father, we thank you for your grace, and uh, we thank you for your mercy. And Lord, it's just a privilege to be here, and I can just feel, and even talking with folks here, that this is a church that you've greatly used. Uh, so many servants of God here this morning. And uh, Lord, I'm not anything great, but you are great. And uh, your word is still great. And we all need it this morning. And so I ask that you would strengthen me, that you will fill me this morning with your spirit. That you speak to every heart here this morning. We ask you move in a wonderful way and do a work that only you can do. Please help us uh, with your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now you know the story of Jonah, if you're being a Christian any length of time, uh, Jonah was a prophet of Israel, and, um, you know, God called him. God called him and gave him a, a commission to carry his word, uh, a specific message, a message of warning uh, to the people of Nineveh. But Jonah rebelled against God. Uh, he, he did not want to do it, and uh, we later found out in chapter 4 uh, the reason why. But here, he finds God is sending him to uh, Nineveh uh, on, the, on, the, on the east side of Israel. And uh, he bought a ship and he, he's going to the west side. He's running away uh, from the presence of the Lord. I find in this passage a wonderful and Old Testament example of what mission is all about. And uh, it's an illustration of what we are told in the New Testament about the work of Christ and in the call to preach the gospel to every creature. And so this morning, my first point is that mission, mission still begins with God. Uh, mission still begins with God. The scripture says here uh, in verse number one, verse one, that the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The word of of the Lord came unto Jonah. Where did that word come from? It came from God. It came from heaven. And today, if uh, in the work of mission, our commission and the work of mission begins in the heart of God. You know, the Lord has called me to reach the people of Germany, but he has reminded me a long time ago that he has a greater burden for the Germans than I can ever have. Because it begins with him. You see, uh, Jonah was in Israel, he was not thinking about the Ninevites. <laughs> he was not concerned about the Ninevites. In fact, in chapter 4, uh, when God finally saves the city, he gets upset. And he says, I knew that uh, you are a compassionate God, that you are, uh, you are full of compassion and grace, and that you will forgive them if they will turn to you. But God sought them in their wickedness. God sought them from heaven. He saw the Ninevites. He saw their needs. And he, uh, he came up with a message, with a plan. To send Jonah to Nineveh. As I speak with you this morning uh, here in Wisconsin, by the way, it's, it's our first time to be in Wisconsin, so we're very excited. <laughs> that makes it very special. And, uh, but as we sit here this morning, you know, in this wonderful church, 
God is seeing cities across this country and across this world that need Christ. God is seeing nations that don't even think about him, that are not even concerned about what he thinks, but they're already on his heart. In fact, the Bible says that the Son of God was slain before the foundation of the world. Before God ever made the first man, he had already thought about what he will do to save them when they sin. Before God ever created this world for men, he had already had a plan to redeem us from our sins because he knew Adam and Eve would turn away, would rebel against him. And so mission begins in the heart of God. And so he, I have to think about the fact that God is love, that he is love. And that no matter how far sinners go, huh, he's willing, he's always working to reach them. No matter how great their rebellion is, he's always laboring to reach them. And maybe you're here this morning, and you don't know Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've heard the gospel before, but, you know, you're, you're just struggling with it. God is still after you. No matter how great your sins are, he still wants to save you. He's still after you because the mission begins in the heart of God. You know, I remember I, you know, I was I'm trained. I was trained as a as an engineer, and I worked on, you know, uh, industrial equipment. I was a programmer, and um, um, I th I guess it was about five years ago. I was working in uh, in Mississippi. I was working. I worked in plants a lot. So we'll, we'll you know we'll go into plants and commission those machines. And you know, I was you know I, I had about at that time about I had about you know eight nine, nine years of experience just just working and commissioning equipment, and, and so I knew what I was doing. So I worked, we had a, you know, a double team because the project was really tight, and so I worked during the day, and then uh, there was a younger engineer that worked during the night, just making sure that, you know, if anything happens, you know, somebody's there, you know, and uh, the custom is not upset and so forth. And, and so I worked, you know, on the certain code on the machine, and I, and I, you know, I worked, I did everything, and I thought, man, this is perfect. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, and I came back this next morning, and there's chaos. You know, everybody's angry. <laughs> the customer is angry. And this thing is not working, and, and everybody's upset, and, uh, and, I, and I don't understand it. And so, I, I, you know, I went into the code of the machine, and I, and I found out somebody touched my code. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the thing that I made perfect, you know? <laughs> and uh, somebody touched it. You know, apparently they had some issues, and, you know, the, the young engineer just went in there and did some of the things that he, I guess, but, you know, messed up some of the things. And I was so upset that somebody touched what I made, you know. You know, when God saw man fall into sin, it stirred him up because we're made in God's image. And he will go, I mean, I cared about the code, but the code is not even a living thing. <laughs> but God made us, he made you in his very image. And so you are in his heart all the time, all the time. He will never forsake you. He will never forsake you. So mission begins in the heart of God. He made us, and he wants to save us. So mission still begins in the heart of God. My second point this morning is that mission still is still the most essential work we can do. It's still the most essential work you can do, we can do. In verse number two, the scripture says, uh, arise, that was God's commission jo to Jonah. He says, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it. Why? Because their wickedness is come up before me. Their wickedness is come up before me. Uh, many years ago, I was, you know, I was still a college student, but I was working again in a plant, and uh, I was walking, walking in the plant, a plant that had, I guess, you know, 500 employees, and, and I was just walking through that plant. And then God flashed a question in my mind. I'm a fool of people. And, uh, you know, everybody is excited about those machines and those, you know, machinery and equipment. And God flashed a question in my mind, and, uh, and just the thought just came, and he said, in 100 years from now, Every person you see will be dead. Every person. And I remember that they're just walking and looking at every, you know, everybody. You know, the younger people, the older people, everybody. 
the Lord was just telling me, every person you see will be gone. Because we all live as long as God lives. You, there will never be a day where you don't exist. Think about that. There will never be a day where you don't exist. And so it's the most essential work, you know. It's, the most, it's more important uh, than our jobs, though our jobs are important. Um, it's more important than our hobbies, though it's, it's important sometimes to rest and, and have those hobbies. There's nothing we can do in this world more important than reach his lost souls for Christ. Because they'll never cease to live. And those who die without Christ will spend an eternity in the lake of fire. We must rescue them. And so because the world is wicked, man is wicked by nation. The Bible says the heart of man is evil, desperately wicked. Now we ask yourself, you know, why is there so much wickedness in the world? Well, because the heart of man is desperately wicked. We are fallen creatures and we need a redeemer. The answer is still Jesus. He's the only answer. There is no other hope. There is no other hope for the nations and the peoples of the, of the world. You know, I'm, I'm discipling a young convert, Kenrick is his name, from Dominica. Dominica. And uh, it was just last week, on Saturday, we were, you know, having our discipleship time. And, uh, and he just stopped me in the middle. And he said, Patrick, I have a question for you. And um, he said, if, if truly a person cannot be saved outside of Christ. What about those in the jungle of Africa that have never heard about him, you know? And so I brought him back to Matthew chapter 28. <coughs> Go ye therefore into all the world. That is because man has no hope outside of Christ that he commissioned us to go and preach the gospel to every creature. The answer is still the cross. The answer is still the blood. There is no other hope for lost souls. So missions is still, still begins with God. Uh, the word of God came unto Jonah. Uh, missions is still the most uh, essential work we can do. There's nothing more important than reaching lost souls with the gospel. Uh, but lastly and thirdly, mission still uh, requires laborers. Mission still requires laborers. The Bible says the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, and the Lord says, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city. Uh, 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 arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. You know, mission still requires, requires doers. Uh, God said to Jonah, he says, arise, arise. And I thought a lot about that word. Uh, that means he was either sitting or laying, you know. And God told him, arise. So God was telling Jonah, I have a work for you to do. There is something to do. <laughs> you must arise. Like a preacher said this morning, uh, God needs hands, you know, doers, doers. Uh, we need to arise, we need to arise. If we, we must reach those that are lost. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible speaks about some doers, some doers that were helpful uh, to the ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 11. Yeah, turn there if you... Uh, the word, if you have the word of God with you this morning. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. What is the, is the apostle Paul writing here? And in verse number 10, it says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed, Unto, unto Thessalonica, Christians to Damasia, Ty Tyrus to 
Titus to Dimashia, excuse me. And then uh, verse 11, only Luke is with me. And then, he's, and then he says here by the Holy Ghost, he says, take Mark and bring him with thee. And notice this, for he is, what is the word? What is the word there? He is profitable, right? He is profitable uh, for me to the ministry. You see, John Mark was a doer. He wasn't, he wasn't the front man, you know. Uh, he wasn't the person that everybody sees. But he was a doer. He was a helper for the ministry. And so there's so many work that needs to be done for the ministries. God needs some hands, you know, to fold tracks. God needs some hands uh, to print Bibles. Uh, God needs some hands to help distribute the scriptures. But we see here uh, that missions still require doers. It still requires men and women, uh, the children of God, that will go and put their hands to the work. Though they, may, they may not be preachers. Though they, may, they may not be pastors. I'd like you to go to the book of 3 John, if you would. Uh, the book of 3 John. And then we see here uh, other doers. Other doers that work with their hands. Uh, the book of 3 John. 3 John. And then uh, I'll start reading in verse number f- uh, 1, verse 4. Uh, 3 John, uh, verse 4. Uh, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, that doest faithfully whatsoever that doest to the brethren and to the strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sword, thou shalt do well. And in verse 7, uh, the, the scripture says, Because for their name's sake. Now he's speaking, he just spoke about missionaries, those that preach the gospel. And he's, um, he's commanding here the church to take care of them. But then verse 7 uh, because for his name's sake, Christ's sake, uh, they went forth, the missionaries, taking nothing uh, of the Gentiles. We, therefore, are to receive such that we might be fellow helpers of the truth. Did you see that? Fellow helpers. Fellow helpers of the truth. Now, let me ask you a question this morning. Are you a fellow helper of the truth? Well, you see this uh, Christian here in the church uh, to whom the Apostle John is writing, uh, they were not preachers. They were not uh, Sunday school teachers. They were not even missionaries. But the scripture says by entertaining missionaries, they were helpers of the truth. Helpers of the truth. And so mission still uh, requires doers. Mission still requires doers. Now, secondly, mission uh, still requires goers. Goers. The Lord said unto Jonah, arise, go, Unto Nineveh. Arise, go unto Nineveh. Someone must go to Nineveh. Someone must reach that city and warn them of the judgment to come. Someone must tell them about God, about his judgment, about his justice. And, uh, and God came to Jonah and says, Arise, go to Nineveh. So let me ask you this question this morning uh, Where are you going? Where are you going? Now, obviously, God hasn't called me to Nineveh. <laughs> the city doesn't exist anymore. But God has called me to Germany. And to me, the Lord has said, arise, go to Germany. Go to Germany and preach the gospel to every creature. Where are you going? Where are you going? Some of us need to go to our neighbors and tell them that Christ died for their sins so that they might be saved. Some of, them need, some of us need to go to our co-workers and warn them of the judgment to come and of the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Some of us need to go to our friends, our family, our relatives and tell them that there is a day of judgment coming on sin, but God has provided a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, where are you going? So mission requires doers, it, it requires goers. But, it, but then it requires preachers. The Lord said unto Jonah, go, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach against it, preach against it. It's interesting because the name Amittai, you know, the father of Jonah, uh, it means my truth, my truth. That was the name of his father. <laughs> And uh, Jonah's name in cell is Dove, and so he was Dove, the son of my truth. And I think it's a wonderful picture of what we should preach. 
We preach the truth. We preach the truth. Now, there are many that go around the world, you know, to help with hospitals and uh, try to solve the social problems of men. But God has called us to preach the truth. Uh, he has called us to preach the truth. And in John chapter 14, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but my me. Now this world doesn't need more programs, you know, uh, to live a better life. This world doesn't need more uh, social uh, events and gatherings so that they may feel better. What the world needs, what the lost world needs, is to have the truth about Christ and the truth about eternal life. And so mission requires preachers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, uh, turn there if you would, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, uh, the scripture says, For after that in the wisdom of God, huh, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You know, when we were uh, still in Germany, in our church, um, we, got a, we got a new pastor. Uh, the, the pastor that started the church was called to Turkey, and so we... We had a new pastor come, and he came from Ghana, Africa. And, uh, and so he was, I still remember, I was translating for him at a church, and he, uh, you know, he preached, he was very excited, very lively in his preaching. And, uh, and so he, you know, he, the first time he preached at a church, I mean, the, the, the eyes of the people were, I mean, they couldn't believe it. You know, people were looking like if he was a monkey, you know, in a, in a zoo. And so, and so <laughs> after the, after the message, he asked me, he says, what, what's going on? You know, what's going on? And uh, now the Germans are not very used to that kind of <laughs> preaching, you know. And, uh, and so they thought this is the craziest thing. And even, even when, 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 uh, when, when, you know, he kind of changed his style after, after a while. But even when, when we will preach just, uh, you know, uh, in a different style, but still uh, as a culture, as a culture, uh, they, they, they have a problem with preaching. They have a problem with people telling them what they should be doing, you know, and uh, because they want to figure everything themselves. <laughs> That's typical German, you know. They like to find things out by themselves, not anybody telling them what they must do. But the truth is, God requires preaching, and He uses preaching. And there's nothing like preaching. <laughs> there's nothing like declaring, "Thus saith the Lord." And he had promised that he would bless preaching. So whatever we do, we must preach the word of God. We must preach the word of God. So missions requires doers, goers, preachers. Uh, and mission still require the divine power. The divine power. In Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, let's turn there if you would. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You see, Jonah's name translated means dove. Now, what is, the, what is the dove a picture of in the Bible? Why is it a picture of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> you remember when the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him in a form of a dove and rested upon him. And I found it very interesting that God gave us here in this book a prophet whose name is Dove. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Lord Jesus Christ says, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world. Ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. I believe it was in 20, uh, I guess 29, or, uh, uh, 09 or 2010, and uh, you know, we, we were in Nuremberg, Germany, 
And um, we, we used to go soul winning. We would go soul winning in the dorms. And uh, we'll go on Thursday night. And uh, we had a German brother in our church. His name was Gustav. Now, Gustav came, he didn't come from a Baptist church, you know, he came from a, you know, a Bible, a, 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 a gospel preaching church, but uh, they did not do any soul winning, you know. Now, he's a full, full-blooded full German, Gustav, and uh, he has his own business. And so when Gustav came to the church, and he became, he became really involved, and uh, one day he, he learned that we would go soul winning uh, in the dorms. And, uh, and so he asked, he says, um, uh, do, you, do, you, do you see people saved? I said, well, uh, not every night, but <laughs> we, do, we do see people saved. He said, no, 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 that doesn't work in Germany. That doesn't work. That's not the way to do it. And so he began to work trying to persuade us to kind of use different methods, which, you know, which, which, which will be fine. He said, it doesn't work. And he just kept, you know, saying that and pushing that. And finally, one day, on, on a Sunday, I, he came to me, and I was blown away. He says, well, you know what? I, 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 I want to go with you on Thursday. You know, I'd I like to go with you. And, and I could tell from the sound of his voice, uh, I could tell he wanted to prove his point. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he wanted to prove his point that it's a waste of time. And so on Thursday, um, you know, we were planning to go. And I, and I recall uh, just... And, 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 you know, we sometimes we'll go for, you know, two or three weeks in a row before we find one person that will be willing to listen to the gospel. And, um, and so, and I knew why he was coming, and, and I was just scared, you know, about what may happen. And so I, I, I just asked the Lord, I said, Lord, if you could just give us a person that would listen today, <laughs> you know, somebody that would listen, and, um, and maybe that would encourage him that God could still use that in Germany. And so we went out to the dorms, and uh, we, you know, we knock on doors. And as usual, most of the young people there, they were not interested, and, um, they, or they would not let us speak with them. Uh, most of them would reject tracts and so forth. And so we came to this lady, and uh, she said, uh, well, I don't, believe in, I don't believe there's a God. There's no God. And, uh, and, and the, the Bible was just written by men, she said. And so... Um, and so I asked her, I said, uh, well, we know you don't believe there is a God. We are here uh, to share with you how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. She said, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't, I don't, I don't have time. I don't want to listen to that. And so I asked her the question. I said, well, um, you know, have you ever changed your mind in your life? She said, well, of course. Everybody changes his mind sometime. I said, well, um, you may change your mind in a few years from today. And, uh, and then realize there is a God. But then, you wouldn't know how to reach him, how to, how to know him. And so that's why we're here today. Will you let us take the Bible and share you how you can know that you're going to heaven, that your sins are forgiven, just in case, just in case, one day, you realize there is a God. He says, well... I don't believe that. You're wasting your time, but go ahead. Amen. And so, and so I was, of course, I was very excited, you know, because I'm thinking about Gustav. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, that's one of our, at least, you know, he had a testament. So I went to the Romans Road and uh, told her that God loved her and that we're all sinners. And, and she was looking like this, you know. I could tell, I mean, she was uninterested. Um, and, um, and, I, and, and we, we showed her that, that we're all sinners, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we showed her that the wages of sin is death. And we talked about hell in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Then we talked about Christ, how he came and died for our sins. But by the time we finished speaking about hell, I could tell from her countenance changed. You know, she was not, she was not like this anymore. You know, she was kind of looking down a little bit. You know, I could tell her some seriousness. And so, you know, we, I just went through because, you know, obviously I thought she was, she's just hitting it, she, she's not interested, but I could tell something was happening. And by the time we finished, and I showed her the way of salvation by faith in Christ, you know, I felt in my heart that God was pushing me, you know, just, just ask her if she believes it. And so I asked her, I said, do you, 
Do you realize that you have sinned against God? And to my surprise, she said yes. And so I asked the full question. I said, well, uh, do you realize that if you die in your sins, you'll be lost forever in hell? And to my surprise, she said yes. And so I become, I become really excited, you know. And I said, well, do you, do you believe that Christ died, he was buried, he rose again from the death, and he died for your sins? And to my surprise, she said yes. And so I asked her, are you willing to trust him today as your Savior? And to my surprise, she said yes. Hey. And that Thursday night, she received, she bowed her head, received Christ as her Savior. And I learned something that day. <laughs> the Holy Ghost can do it. He yeah. surely can. And uh, he just needs laborers. Uh, there was nothing special that we said or did really. Uh, but he's still in the soul-saving business. And so if we just do our part, if we just go, if we just preach and ask for his help, God will save, and he will save many. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the word of God. And I just pray you encourage us to trust you and, uh, and to carry the gospel to the ends of the world. Stand, we'll sing a song of invitation. We'll sing Under His Wings, 269 in your hymnals. Please stand with us. Under His Wings. <laughs> For this day, we thank you for the message of, uh, of uh, witnessing, Lord, and uh, the encouragement that we need to wit witness. And Lord, we thank you for your protection and and uh, uh, give us uh, courage, knowing that we have 
your protection under your wings and, and help as we go forth and live our daily lives. We also uh, uh, witness uh, for you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you are dismissed. Thank you.